it's super easy to overlook a software update, but DaVinci Resolve version 20, this one is different. This one is packed with changes that actually improve how you edit every day. Not just flashy AI tools, but real workflow upgrades that make things easier, speed things up, and open the door for more creativity. And I'll be showing you how one of them literally helped to cut this video, so stick around for the end for that one. Hey guys, it's JC from Motion VFX here, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down my top five features from DaVinci Resolve version 20. All the things that every editor, creator, and post-production professional should know about. And a quick note before we dive in, Blackmagic has actually improved the Fusion side of Resolve as well, which means we have even more opportunity at Motion VFX to create even better plugins. First up is something editors have requested forever, and that is a keyframe editor. DaVinci Resolve version 20 now comes with a full-featured keyframe editor. It's a real pop-up animation interface that gives you access to transforms, cropping, speed changes, and even control of the keyframes from applied effects. You can pop it out into its own window, move it to a second monitor, and even adjust the curves directly with the Bezier handles. And if you remember my video on speed ramping where I was using a lot of the different keyframes to get that motion right, this just makes that process a lot easier. You're still doing the same things, it's just now in a better interface. So if you haven't watched that, I will make sure it's linked below, but this just makes the whole thing a lot easier. Feature number two is the vertical UI viewer. We all know vertical video is here to stay and it's only becoming more popular, whether you're editing for Reels, Shorts, TikToks, or any mobile first platform. Previously, even if the video you were editing was vertical, you were still stuck inside that horizontal frame. But now with Resolve version 20, it introduces a proper vertical viewer mode. Just click the new vertical view button on the edit or color page and your canvas stretches to the top and bottom, finally giving you that true full screen look with your vertical content. This for me is a big one because a lot of the work that I'm doing is going on social media. So being able to now see it on a bigger screen just means I'm not going to miss out on those tiny details. Feature number three is the all new improved Magic Mask. Now this update makes Resolve's arguably most powerful tool even better. It's now faster, cleaner, and way easier to use. Instead of you drawing an outline on a subject like you did before, you now just have to click once and Resolve handles the rest of the mask for you. It automatically detects the subject with improved pattern and shape recognition, giving you a solid base selection with barely any effort. And even though it was great before, with it now being faster and more accurate, that just saves you a lot of time. So you're having less time here having to stop and re-dial in the mask so you can stay locked in to that creative flow you have. But let me know, if one of these ideas has got your creative brain firing, drop it down in the comments below on what you use it for. Or better yet, Pitch us your dream ideal plugin and we might just make it. Feature number four is the AI music editor. Now this is nothing new because Premiere Pro and Audition have had this for a very long time, but as a sole Resolve user, I am so happy that this is now natively built into the app. Put very simply, the AI music editor allows you to change the length of a track seamlessly. And when I say seamlessly, it literally, you can't tell where the cut is. It almost like makes a new song with that song to your desired length. Very cool. I've always said how music that we use for our videos isn't made for our videos. The artist made it for, you know, fair reasons, but we have to make that music work for our edits. So usually, you know, we're trying to find the beat to the drops and we're cutting it in to make it short sure times well. This just saves the whole process. You can literally just go to the inspector tab in the audio section, hit the AI music remixer, hit live trim, and then you can literally just drag your clip to however long you want it. If you want it longer, if you want it shorter, does that and automatically goes through and retimes your track to your desired length. It's crazy how it works because you literally can't tell where the cut is. The fifth feature is the IntelliScript. Now I think I saved the best for last because this feature is designed to help cut your videos automatically based on a script that you provide. So how it works is Resolve needs a script of your video. Then on your clip or clips inside your media bin, you can just right click, hit AI tools, and then create new timeline using IntelliScript. That's when it will then pull up the window for you to find that text file. Once you've done that, it's going to work its magic. Create a new timeline with all of your clips cut up on that timeline. Incredible. It has different options that are on the different layers and it just does it. But instead of just talking about it, I wanted to see how well it actually works. So this whole video you've watched so far, I hope, has been edited by the IntelliScript. Let's take a look. So diving further and testing out this IntelliScript, I have my script that I've copied into the text file here on the right, and then all the clips on the left. I'll drag all of these clips into my project, select the IntelliScript option, and then choose the script file as the reference. So that took exactly four minutes and two seconds to cut down 49 minutes worth of speaking into this, what in total, 11 minutes and 49 second timeline. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps where I'm, you know, 
going over the script again, trying to remember what to say. Now, overall, it has done a pretty good job, you know, especially taking so much footage and so many mistakes that I've made while speaking. And you can see on the bottom layer here, video one, this is the main track. And then above that, where all these clips are disabled, are different options of the same thing. But the main thing I notice is that it does cut you off very quickly. So if I take this part here. First up is something editors have requested forever, and that is a keyframe editor. To be resolved, rise and twenty. You can see it, it literally gives you no time to breathe. It goes straight on to the next part, which I guess you need to put some bigger gaps in the script or something just so it has time for those spaces. But overall, as a starting point, this is really, really useful. I'm not sure why it's left these strange gaps when I was like, you know, adjusting the script or reading notes. But other than that, you know, this has got a massive, massive starting point. I'm excited to see what this is going to look like in a year or two's time because it's only going to get better. So uh, yeah, nice job to resolve. But remember, at this point, it's still in beta. So don't expect the cuts to be perfect. But this just gives you a huge head start for things like interviews, voiceovers, even talking heads like these. This just gives that first initial cut that will save you a bunch of time going through all the bad takes. Now that I've finished editing this video, I can give you more of a review on the IntelliScript. And for the most part, like I said, it does do a pretty good job, especially at getting rid of a lot of the bad takes. It does somehow find the good take. But the one main thing that you want to be aware of is that if there's any extra sentences that you may have added, it will not include them. If there's any footage of you talking that's not inside the script, it pretty much won't recognize it. For example, when I was introducing each point, saying number one, the keyframe editor, number two, the vertical viewer, none of that was in the timeline because it wasn't in the script. Even though I had like one point, but it doesn't recognize that. It has to literally be exactly what you say in the script. Otherwise, it doesn't quite work that well. Which does make sense. It just means you really have to focus on the timeline to make sure you aren't missing anything. But as a starting point, this is pretty good. Before we wrap this up, there are a few other features worth mentioning. Maybe not headline features, but something worth a shout out. First up is the music beat detector. You can now right click on a track, select show music beats and Resolve will automatically track and overlay markers onto your timeline. This is super useful for when you're making edits that are cut to the beat. I personally do a lot of that, so it's going to save me a lot of time from having to listen back to the track and constantly hitting M, 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 having to readjust it to get it aligned. This just saves so much time. If you've ever moved your video for a split screen or just somewhere else in the canvas, you may not have realized a small bit of the background that is revealing. Now you can change it so that background goes bright red, so you will never experience that again. And finally, if you're like me and you use your mouse to zoom in, it was incredibly frustrating I'd always go to the center of the image. Like, I didn't always want to go to the middle. So now in the update, you'll actually zoom in to wherever your mouse cursor is. So if you're at the top of the screen, you can zoom in there, the bottom, it works so much better. And this is something I wish was here ages ago, because when I used to do the magic mask in the old way, it would be so difficult when it zooms into the middle and I have to try and figure out a way to get further up or I have to try and mask it from a zoomed out view. Very frustrating. So this now makes that a lot easier. So those are my top five features of DaVinci Resolve, plus a few extras that make your workflow smoother straight away. It really is the little things that make the biggest difference. Before you update, make sure you do back up because this is still beta, so bugs, crashes, and weird behaviors are all very possible. And if you aren't following our Instagram page, you, you should be, but you would have missed this super useful trick that we posted. Blackmagic Design just released an incredible update with DaVinci Resolve version 20. Now, here at Motion VFX, we are just as excited as you are about all the game changing new features, but here's a quick tip on how to update safely. Before downloading the new beta version, you should actually rename the 19.4 version that you currently have. Head over to your applications folder, right click on DaVinci Resolve, hit rename, and change it to version 19.4. Then you can download version 20, following the same process, renaming that to DaVinci Resolve 20. And on the 19.4 version, which is your main version, you can then switch that back to just being called DaVinci Resolve. Your machine will always look for the default name as the primary one to use. So it's safer having the more stable version of 19.4 as that version. And the most important thing to remember is that any project you open on version 20 can't be open on version 19. So make sure you back up or even duplicate that project before you open it on version 20. This is still beta versions. There are likely to be issues with bugs, crashes, and plugins that may not work how they're supposed to. So it's always safe to have a backup version in 19.4. So I hope you learned something from this video and stay tuned because with this new update, we have some exciting things in the works. So let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite feature or what's missing? What do you think could be better improved? You know, let me know. Here at Motion VFX, we are extremely excited about this update and are eagerly awaiting the new release. But with that being said, that is all from me today. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.